In this video, I want to talk about autotrophs versus heterotrophs, and then talk about chemotrophs versus phototrophs. But something important to realize is nearly all life requires carbon. Life and cells are made out of organic molecules, which are made out of these carbon atoms. So therefore, if an organism wants to live, it needs a source of carbon. So therefore, an organism can be either be an autotroph or an organism can be a heterotroph, and these terms describe how that organism gets the carbon they need for life. For example, if an organism is an autotroph, then it can take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as a source of carbon to create all their own organic molecules. Because we know carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has carbon atoms, so autotrophs can take these carbon dioxides from the atmosphere and use it as a source of carbons to create their own organic molecules to live and, and for life. However, heterotrophs, they get the carbons they need for life from other organic molecules. So a hetero, or if an organism is a heterotroph, then it needs to ingest and eat organic molecules, and it can use those organic molecules that it's eaten as a source of carbons to create their own organic molecules. So that's what autotrophs and heterotrophs, that, that's the difference between an autotroph versus a heterotroph. These terms describe how an organism gets the carbons they need for life. However, what's the difference between a chemotroph and a phototroph? Well, we also know nearly all life and all cells require ATP, this high energy ATP molecule to fuel all the energetic processes they need for life. However, where do organisms get the energy needed to create their ATP? Well, if you're a chemotroph, then you get all the energy you need to create all your ATP from redox reactions. So chemotrophs do energetically favorable redox reactions and use the energy from those redox reactions to create their ATP. However, phototrophs use the energy in sunlight. We know sunlight is a form of electromagnetic radiation which is made out of photons and those photons have energy. So phototrophs can use the photons in sunlight as a source of energy to create all their ATP. So therefore we have these two dimensions. This dimension describes how an organism gets the carbons they need for life. Well, this dimension describes how an organism gets the energy they need to create their ATP. And an organism can be a mix. For example, humans were chemoheterotrophs. So what does it mean if the human organism is a chemoheterotroph? Well, we're chemo because we get all the energy we need to create our ATP from redox reactions. For example, we know we ingest carbohydrates and fats and, uh, and proteins. So we can take those carbohydrates, fats, and proteins and oxidize them. We can go through energetically favorable redox reactions from those carbohydrates and fats, and we can use the energy from those thermodynamically favorable redox reactions to create all the ATP we need for life. And we're also chemoheterotrophs. So what is it? What does the heterotroph tell us? Well, it means that again, we're life. So we require proteins and, and nucleic acids and, and, and fats for life or for the cell to, to function properly. So therefore, to create all those organic molecules we need for life, we need a source of carbons to create the proteins we need and, and the nucleic acids and the, and the fats and etc. So where do we get our carbons? Well, we have to eat other organic molecules. For example, we need to eat other carbohydrates and other fats and other proteins. So when we eat those other organic molecules, we can use those carbons from those organic molecules as a source of carbons to create our own organic molecules, to create our own enzymes and nucleic acids and fats and, and, and etc. So therefore, we have these two dimensions. And, and again, there are also, for example, could be a photo autotroph. For example, plants, most plants are photo autotrophs. So what does this mean? This means that plants get the energy they need to create their ATP from sunlight, from the photons in sunlight. And they also, they're an autotroph, so they get the carbons they need to create all their organic molecules to create their own nucleic acids and proteins and, and, and carbohydrates. They get the, the carbons to create their own organic molecules from carbon dioxide. They can simply just take the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as a source of carbons to create their own organic molecules. So in the next video, I'm going to go into more detail on the difference between autotrophs versus heterotrophs. And in the video after that, I'll go on the difference between chemotrophs versus phototrophs. And I have a link of both of those videos below.